So it's an interesting transition here as we talked about uh, business models and bad pipes in the other room and now we come in here and we talk about the component of the network and now we talk about the components of that component within the network. So uh, bear with me if I go into some level of detail uh, beyond what we would normally do um, or uh, I'll try to keep it at a high level. Uh, so this is this can be seen as the anatomy of a session border controller company. So Acme Packet uh, clearly um, it's a category leader um, at 50 to 60% market share. It was founded in August of 2000. At that point, we weren't exactly sure uh, what we're building. We're building a, a voice over IP network element and, uh, and really uh, built the session border controller uh, market up uh, with the unique combination of hardware and software. Uh, clearly, we're expanding our focus uh, in enterprise as well as uh, multi-service uh, gateway session routing. Uh, but uh, session border control is our uh, primary market. Uh, top tier customers worldwide, we've been very fortunate with our customer base. Uh, we've been very fortunate with our growing revenue. Um, a good session border controller company should play well with others. Uh, you can see we've got premier distribution partners, 50 worldwide. Um, it sits in the uh, uh, really a ubiquitous network of uh, a homogenous network of, uh, of various uh, telecommunications uh, manufacturers. Uh, certainly, you should see a, a, a strong session border controller uh, company these days, uh, as the market has been very good for voice over IP peering. So where do these SBCs uh, fit in the network? Uh, really anywhere there is a business relationship. If you look at uh, PSTN termination um, as a business, uh, that, uh, that can incorporate a voice uh, over IP boundary. You may have session border controller uh, requirements there. You may have IP transit relationships. You may have uh, contact center relationships, directory services, outsourced applications. Uh, certainly voicemail we've seen. Uh, messaging is an outsourced application where there's then a business relationship uh, that you need to protect uh, hosted services. Uh, and as we just spoke about um, managing that relationship all the way down to the customer, you may have a, a, a business relationship or some edge of your network on the access side which you need to then control the relationship. Uh, what does a session border controller look like? Uh, well, it can be uh, standalone hardware. It can be a single rack unit device. It can be a chassis based device if you may have unique uh, signaling, media, maybe transcoding requirements. Uh, certainly it can be a component of an ATCA uh, system. So the uh, session border controller could be uh, simply a blade in uh, another platform, switching platform. How would you deploy a session border controller? Well, uh, certainly there are integrated and decomposed configurations, and um, uh, we would uh, propose uh, the, 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 the configuration that best fits your network. That may be uh, both signaling and media, as you can see, across a peering boundary, uh, where both the signaling, the control, and the media flows through a single device. Session border control can be uh, decoupled or decomposed you may have soft switching control of a session controller. Uh, you may have soft switch uh, control of a border gateway. You can decompose uh, uh, the elements into session control uh, of a session border controllers, controlling the border gateway function of a session border controller. That's the media and signaling. In this case, you can completely uh, decompose signaling uh, for media and simply have signaling firewall functionality and that would be referred to as session border control and then the border gateway is the media function and that's also uh, session border control. Certainly the uh, software architecture uh, incorporates uh, many elements. Um, you can see uh, there's a session routing uh, component at the top, signaling services, multi-protocol is uh, critical to your uh, session border control platform as, uh, as we see a variety of uh, protocols deploy these days, but also as you go down um, this chart, you see more uh, security and media control functions. Those are certainly uh, a component of your software architecture, but uh, may take hardware also to implement. So we see session border control as both hardware and software uh, components. Uh, certainly security um, is um, a function at that business relationship boundary and uh, certainly the security framework has many uh, many components. Um, the session border controller should protect itself uh, as well as protect the service. Uh, you may have access control requirements. Topology hiding is a, is a function that many people uh, view as the session border controller uh, uh, primary. It's its primary role. Uh, 
uh, fraud prevention, infrastructure DDoS prevention. These are all security components, uh, monitoring and reporting against those, um, uh, those security requirements are all part of your session border control. Uh, this uh, kind of goes into some of the details of a hardware implementation, and this really is the anatomy, as we see it, of a session border controller. So you've got, uh, you've got signaling processing. People think of off-the-shelf hardware as having adequate signaling processing, but does that off-the-shelf signaling processor have traffic management and network processing to protect itself, right? You're protecting the service as well as you're protecting the session border controller itself, right? So without uh, traffic management and signaling cues that allow and, and, uh, and potentially prohibit the flow of uh, signaling into your processor, uh, you can't adequately protect the uh, service or adequately protect the uh, device itself. Down at the front end, you may have uh, network processing that, uh, that uh, assists that software functionality in the session border controller with hardware. Um, that hardware can do lookups and forwarding simply to forward media, uh, maybe to the control plane or on to the next user, uh, um, but it may also protect the service itself. Uh, you need inter an interface between the signaling processor and the network processor itself so that you can dynamically protect the service. Um, your, uh, your encryption may sit at the front end and it may sit off to the side of your signaling. There are different models to deploy uh, encryption in session border controller, uh, in a session border controller, uh, but that encryption should either uh, reside at the front end or as a security co-processor. Co so, as you can see, the signaling would flow up to the signaling processor media would flow end-to-end uh, -end through the uh, simply through line rate network processing. So that's a that's a good look at the anatomy of a session border controller. Uh, so once again you know why would you choose Acme Packet as your uh, as your session border controller company? We've got breadth uh, of uh, uh, product solutions. We certainly fit the deployment model. Uh, we've got a lot of experience with uh, session border control deployments. Um, you want that security device to uh, reside in many different networks in many different environments uh, so that you can be sure that uh, your um, potentially your loopholes, your security uh, uh, vulnerabilities will be discovered before deployment. Uh, certainly you want, as I said, to uh, have a, a company then that plays well with others. Um, you're always going to be in a larger environment of business uh, relationships and you want that company to be able to work with your uh, distribution partner.